Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So this is the first mini I've got here today. Originally he was a wrestler figure. I'm going to pop up some pictures as well as I go if I have some work in progresses. But this guy was a really cheap wrestler figure. I think he was one or two euro. And he was in this really kind of, not intimidating pose, but he was kind of come and get me kind of pose. I don't know the, the name of the wrestler, but like I said, I'll pop it up. And as you can see, I've turned him into a genie here. A pretty large scale genie. I think he's on a three by three base. And this is all, it's done pretty simply. This is just foam board with hot glue around it just to create that kind of swirling blue genie effect. And um, this was, I made this around the time, you know, when Will Smith came out as the new genie um, in, in the new live action Aladdin movie, the Disney live action uh, Aladdin movie. So yeah, it worked out pretty well. I really, the only work I had to do was give him some pointy ears here with some green stuff and at the same time I gave him some earrings as well as a nice curly goatee and some cool um, eyebrows. He had the smile already so that really really worked out this mis mischievous kind of you know he'll give you grant your wishes but maybe they'll um, end out bad for you in the long run kind of idea and I just gave him some of the gold bracers to kind of match it up with the the blue genie the blue disney genie so i think he came out pretty cool pretty simple craft now honestly but the blue skin and the scale really works well you can imagine the the kind of encounter between these two so next up here guys this is was originally a little mr incredible figure and um, that i think was a key ring or something similar originally um but as you can see he's just been covered in little different aggregates of sand and stones and this kind of thing very easy to do and then you can coat them in some um, baking soda or baking powder and um, super glue as well to kind of seal it a little bit more and add in that little bit smaller detail in the gaps. And I did some green stuff around his face just to make him, if you can kind of make it out, he's got a nose and two eyebrows and this big kind of stony jaw here. Kind of reminds me of the guys from The Never Ending Story. I think they were like rock eaters or rock biters, I think. Uh, that was kind of a flashback to my to my childhood there for a moment. But you'll see on the top here, he's got a little tiny, little tiny daisy. So that, I think that's what I'm going to call him. Or no, is it a buttercup? Yeah, it's a buttercup. Yeah, I'm going to call him buttercup. So that's just a little bit of a bristle from a toothbrush, and a little bit of, I think it's cardboard or even I think it's just plastic. Um, and I coated that in Mod Podge as well, just to make it that little bit tougher. And so he's going to be, yeah, he's going to be Buttercup. I suppose, yeah, they have no gender really, but I'm going to go with Buttercup. And that's him beside the 28mm uh, Barbarian there from Reaper. So yeah, he's medium size. I, he looks pretty friendly to me. I can imagine kind of a scenario where they uh, he just comes out of the ground and he's got this little Buttercup on his, on his head. Or maybe you have to go and pick pick flowers for whatever reason and it seems like a really boring quest until you pick this one and uh, he gets angry with you for trying to pull off his hair but anyway that's him guys something a little bit more fun and friendly and i like his um his action pose as well so as it goes it's a really simple one to do basically if you have to figure at any toy you can just like cover it in sand and rocks i would say to keep it to the smaller scale because it looks more realistic to you know beside a 28 millimeter um miniature so that's something to consider but it's a really easy one to do and they can come out with like really cool and interesting uh, results the next up here we've got another it's kind of smaller scale one it is see if you can guess who it is it was originally elsa from frozen and um, it was a little figure that i actually got out of uh the skip so it was like from a second hand shop that they weren't actually selling and really simply all it was same thing again i cleaned it up and I actually filled in, it had some kind of gashes and stuff gone out of the back of it. I think it was bitten or kind of chewed on by a small child potentially. But yeah, I kind of filled that in with some green stuff and then gave her some nice, you know, scream look face to her there. Let me see. Yeah, nothing crazy. Left, left her hair as it was because it made sense. And this kind of scream slash skeleton kind of face. And that worked out pretty well. Uh, pretty pretty easy to do, just, just a bit of green stuff. And... After that, I kind of just popped on some Mod Podge and some tissue paper to create that kind of texture there to add some interest to all this really flat surface of the robes. And um, so I think that kind of came up quite well after just a dry brush. Really, really simple paint job as well, just dark blues and then some dry brush over it. Really, really simple and kind of came out to a, a kind of a nice banshee, I think. This is just a route I put on the side to kind of fill out the scene of the base. 
and on the base there's a little tiny bit of dried tea and there's a little bit of a wash of green on that to create some kind of dead leaves as well as some what do i have on it i think it's actually ash from the fire with some wash on it as well which is just nice for really really small detail and aggregate on um on the base just it's a little bit more realistic to the scale so that's her compared to the size 28 millimeter barbarian here which i think works out pretty well if you're looking for each she could be a banshee she could be a ghost and um, so really really simple one guys another one to look at the figures and look at the toys that you find around you and kind of think of them in a different way what could they be potentially that's just with a little bit of green stuff like there's really not a ton to it uh green stuff and tissue paper and you're set and you have a ghost or a banshee so just keep an eye out guys so this one is something different than again this guy's a creature originally created by arcane forge um, a youtube channel that he does fantastic creature art and he'll do monsters uh from the monster manual and uh, this is one that he made up himself i'm pretty sure it's called a void fox and this was this video was out i think more than a year ago and i had made this guy ages ago as well but it's actually a friendly creature now i'm not sure if the scale is a compl is 100 correct because i think it's actually a medium creature and this one is on say a large uh, large base so it's a little bit different that way but it's actually yeah it's a friendly creature and they actually come and help people in need but originally this was some kind of jackal or coyote um figure that i obviously added on to a little bit here you can see it's got fluffs here it's extended some green stuff work on the fur that uh, i've used to give it a little bit more detail as well as this kind of celestial being and um, you'll see all these uh, different star symbols and this kind of layout on its back and this is all just you know flicking it with, with um a paintbrush with white paint and it's it's kind of it kind of disintegrates or not disintegrates kind of fades away into the void i suppose void fox and it, from my understanding it appears to people in need and it has this kind of cool ring around it but that's just a piece of plastic and then it's textured with a bit of um tissue paper just so it wasn't 100 percent just uh we'll say flat or you know not a just to add some texture to it we'll say just around the edge um and you'll see here this is just fluff or we'll say cotton wool but not exactly cotton wool the stuff taken from um stuffed toys we'll say like teddies and that just to make it look like it's disintegrating away you know and it's been hardened with so much podge and it's been sprayed you know like undercoated and it's kind of it's a weird it's a weird um, material to work with i will admit for for miniatures because uh, it can be kind of pulled apart even after the fact and there's a bit of tissue and you can see here it's kind of fading away here up at the back so recently the artwork i'll put a link in the description to his video about it and you'll find out more information but see that's the one that i have printed out just that i was working on so you'll see it's kind of eyes beaming with beaming across and the blue of the paws and everything so i think i got it close enough i mean i'm happy enough with it just as it goes uh, and there's another interesting different creature to have it have in my arsenal but it was uh, just yeah a fun one to make and the base is not a magic now it does look like kind of a desert scene i just wanted to keep away from any kind of darker colors on the base and you know if it's some kind of coyote or something that wanders the lands looking for people to help this is kind of just just a simple base to pop it on so it doesn't take away from from the mini itself but i think it works pretty well compared to the 28 millimeter barbarian here you can imagine them almost like a mount i don't know if that was an option but i think i'm pretty happy with how he came out in the end and the kind of speckled uh, effect of the stars it's very easy to do and it's kind of cheating in a way but it uh, it works out well and his eyes kind of beaming as well going across it could have been you could use plenty of different kind of animals as a base for this you could have used a wolf i say or uh, a fox even would have been better because obviously maybe you know void fox a fox figure could work if you were to do it on a smaller scale even so that might be something to do in the future even like pups which could be amazing as well just that's just thinking off the top of my head i suppose but yeah guys check out his video like i said i'll pop it in the description and you can learn more about this creature and uh let him know that i've made a miniature of him and he can see what he, what he thinks of it so next up guys we've got a really weird one here from ice age could be ice age 3 or ice age 4 i'm not sure but some kind of raptor um, and obviously large scale here on a proper base 
I've ki kind of tried to link it in and make it look a wee bit more realistic by uh, giving it, a, you know, putting a little bit of work into the base here with some cork and tufts and that kind of thing because it is quite cartoony, which doesn't bother me, but it's kind of a, a crazy one, all right. Um, but yeah, so basically this was in a really cheap kind of, I'm pretty sure it was a Chinese kind of re-sculpt pack that was in a really, really cheap shop as well. And it came with some other kind of random bits as well. It came with these figures that, you know, are all over the place. That's that squirrel guy that always tries to get to the nuts or whatever, the acorn. Um, and he's in space. This guy might be useful for something, even just the body. Uh, so it's really weird. It's kind of pretty solid plastic I'd say it takes paint quite well I'd say it could be quite toxic but as it goes he's he could be useful and then this weird uh, goat creature I have taken his front hooves off or something already so that's already been cannibalized but he could be an interesting sculpt even just a head to pop that on something else but going back to this guy anyway um, yeah I repainted him uh, what else did I do not really much of the figure itself actually just really um, cleaned it up I did give it a good wash because especially with dealing with that kind of plastic you don't really know what you're going to get you're better off washing it as much as you can probably using uh, isopropyl alcohol if you have it just to clean it as much as possible and then I re really just undercoated it and went went added with some paint not really thinking about too much about the paint job but it's a little bit more muted than it was it was quite bright and I think it makes more sense. So it could be kind of a big, funky, crazy bird slash lizard um, reptile type creature here. So that was kind of another random one. But I'd say don't, you know, knock it. If you see stuff like this, don't say no to it. Like potentially I could have locked this head off and popped something else on it. Because the body itself, yeah, it's not got a ton of detail. You have some detail there with the feathers, which I was glad of because it actually came out nicely with some washes and the... Uh, and some dry brushing there but the body itself is you know quite flat but i would say don't say no to this kind of stuff if you're prepared to go and use something as silly as this in your in your games these guys are a nice selection of dragons that i actually got when i was on honeymoon and they were really really cheap kind of tub of dragons type idea and i was very surprised how well they actually turned out you'll see i've kind of had some fun with the different bases for them all as well so you'll see this fella here the red dragon on his hoard of gold here his glittery gold with these little gems in it really simple paint job um and they actually had a very nice detail on them i kind of wish i got more of them now but you'll see the mold line on his face there is pretty it's really bad but that doesn't bother me too much well let's look at him on this side it's a lot better um yeah no nothing crazy paint job or anything like that but he was a lot of fun he could be used as i suppose like a drakeling or a drake something like that uh, or dragon link i'm not really sure of the term but just like a younger dragon and he's got a little bit of a horde there he's just starting off and um, this guy is more of a green dragon i don't know why i chose him as the green one maybe it just seemed like seemed to fit he's kind of got some kind of fur on his face as well there as opposed to loads of horns and he's got a little bit of base with detail of some wood and yeah it kind of just looks like a little bit of a woodland he seemed to fit in that way really really easy paint job again just some greens and dry brush a little bit of gray as well not to have it too overpowered with the greens it's kind of gives a lot of fun and um, we got this blue or white dragon here this is a bit of odd looking this guy's got two sets of eyes now i'm not sure if that was on purpose or one of them was uh, nostrils and i just went ahead and painted them as eyes and you can see that dirty mole line going there as well that's pretty pretty bad it kind of fits in with his with his skin or with his uh, scale layout but i'm not too sure about that now the snow on the base is baking soda or baking powder and um pva and it's kind of been built up or it could be mod podge as well i'm not too sure but i just heard that was kind of a good way of doing it and it seems to be holding up quite well these were made almost a year ago now i'd say so they're actually holding up quite well the snow effect anyway and it's nice and hard so if i was to ever tackle we'll say 40 gay space wolves or some kind of snow troll or something like this i'd probably use that technique this guy is a copper dragon uh, as you can see re look at that paint job it's literally just copper with some brown wash and he's on like the spiky arid uh, chaos looking wasteland base here but he, something about this looks some kind of, it looks like some kind of classic dragon i don't know why it's maybe the pose or the or the the look in the face he looks more like a, a classic kind of painting of a dragon we'll say some not from renaissance but you know those really old books so he's like he's cool he's you know 
more of an action pose. This guy is a black dragon, or I painted him up to be a black dragon anyway. He looks that way with his with his horns and his kind of frill on his head here, and he looks actually quite sad in a way because he's on a swampy base um, with some goopy green and stuff like this. It kind of simple enough to to make the base look like a swamp. Same thing again, this classic dragon looking tail here. Well, I think he's quite nice. Now the base sizes are a bit weird. I know they're not actually legit, but they just seem to fit better and I thought it made more sense to have them on that size base than a 2x2 two two. so I'm not too bothered by it as games go oh you'll see that look the Chinese dragon oh what does it say Chinese dragon yes look I only just coughed that out that's really bad I have that left on but uh, uh, it doesn't bother me too much <laughs> it's pretty it's just branded like but you'll see here the mold lines as well but that's you're going to have to deal with that when it's toys and you're, and you're using them as minis but apart from that I think Really, really simple paint job and nice colourful base there with a few flowers. I think it really worked out nice. And I'll pop them all up there beside the Barbarian. And that's it guys, that's another video um, of kind of toys I've had that I've made into minis over the last while. And um, I'll keep them coming once I make things that I think are interesting or that you might want to see. Um, so let me know what you like. Let me know what you might want to see in the future, sure. And let me know if you have tried to make anything like this yourself. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Look after yourselves.